discontented sun from out the fiery portal of the east when he perceives the envious clouds are bent to dim his glory and to stain the track of his bright passage to the occident we, we are amazed and thus long have we stood to watch the fearful bending of thy knee, because we thought ourselves thy lawful king. If we be not, show us the hand of God that hath dismissed us from our stewardship. For well we know no hand of blood and bone can grip the sacred handle of our scepter unless it do profane, steal, or usurp. And though you think that all, as you have done, have torn their souls by turning them from us, and we are barren and bereft of friends, yet no, my master, God omnipotent, is mustering in his clouds, on our behalf, armies of pestilence, and they shall strike your children, yet unborn and unbegot, that lift your vassal hands against my head, and threat the glory of my precious crown. Tell Bolingbroke, for yon methinks he stands, that every stride he makes upon my land is dangerous treason. He has come to open the purple testament of bleeding war. But ere the crown he looks for live in peace, ten thousand bloody crowns of mother's sons shall ill become the flower of England's face. Change the complexion of her made pale peace to scarlet indignation and bedew her pastor's grass with faithful English blood. The king to of heaven forbid our lord the king should so with civil and uncivil arms be rushed upon. Thy thrice noble cousin, Harry Bolingbroke, doth humbly kiss thy hand. And by the honourable tomb he swears that stands upon your royal grandsire's bones, and by the royalties of both your bloods, and by the buried hand of warlike gaunt, and by the worth and honour of himself. His coming hither hath no further scope than for his lineal royalties, and to beg enfranchisement immediate on his knees, which on thy royal party granted once. His glittering arms he will commend to rust, his barbed steeds to stables, and his heart to faithful service of your majesty. This swears he, as he is a prince, is just. And as I am a gentleman, I credit him. Gentle Northumberland, say thus the king returns. His noble cousin is right welcome hither, and all the number of his fair demands shall be accomplished without contradiction. With all the gracious utterance thou hast, speak to his gentle hearing, kind comment. We do debase ourselves, cousin, do we not, to look so poorly and to speak so fair, should we call back Northumberland and send defiance to the traitor and so die? No, good my lord, let's fight with gentle words, till time lends friends and friends their helpful sort. Oh, God. Oh, God. That ere this tongue of mine that laid the sentence of dread banishment on yon proud man should take it off again, or that I could forget what I have been, or not remember what I must be now. Northumberland comes back from Bolingbroke. What must the king do now? Must, must he submit? The king shall do it. Must he be deposed? The king shall be contented. Must he lose the name of king? A god's name, let it go. I'll give my jewels for a set of beads, my gorgeous palace for a hermitage, my scepter for a palmer's walking staff, my subjects for a pair of carved saints, and my large kingdom for a little grave. <laughs> A little, little grave. <laughs> An obscure grave. <laughs> or or I'll, I'll be buried in the king's highway, some way of common trade, where subjects' feet may hourly trample on their sovereign's head. <laughs> For on my heart they tread now whilst I live. And buried once, why not upon my head? 
Oh, Merle, thou weep'st, my tender-hearted cousin. Our tears and sighs shall lodge the summer's corn and make a dearth in this revolting land. Or shall we drop them still upon one place? Yes, till they have fretted us a pair of graves within the earth, and therein laid there lies two kinsmen dig their graves with weeping eyes. <laughs> Would not this ill do well? <laughs> well, well, I see. I, I talk, but... I be, and you laugh at me. Oh, oh, mo most mighty prince, my lord, Northumberland. Uh, what, uh, what, what says uh, King Bolingbroke? <laughs> <coughs> will, will his majesty give Richard leave to live till Richard die? You make a leg, and Bolingbroke says, aye. <laughs> my lord, in the base court he doth attend to speak with you. May it please you to come down? Down? <laughs> down I come, like glistering Phaeton, wanting the manage of unruly jades. In the base court, base court, ah, ah, where kings grow base to come at traitors' calls and do them grace. In the base court, come down, down court, down king, for night owls shriek, where mounting larks should sing. like a frantic man. Yet he's come. Stand all apart and show fair duty to his majesty. My gracious lord. A hey, cousin, you debase your princely need make the base earth proud with kissing it. Me rather had my heart might feel your love than my unpleased eye see your courtesy. Up, cousin, up. Your heart is up, I know. Thus I at least, although your knee be low. My gracious lord, I come but for mine own. Well, your own is yours, and I am yours, and all. Well, so far be mine, my most redoubted lord, as my true service shall deserve your love. Well, you deserve. They well deserve to have, that know the strongest and surest way to get. Uncle, give me your hand. Nay, dry your eyes. Tears show their love, but want their remedies. <laughs> Cousin, I, I am too young to be your father. Ah, but you are old enough to be my heir. <laughs> what, what you will have, I'll give, and willing to. For do we must what force will have us do. Set on towards London, cousin, is it so? Yea, my good lord. Then I must not say no. Mm. 